Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? Are you serious? All right, guys, we're live from, I guess, the sickbed. Uh, it's about the only way I can put it, but uh, appreciate your prayers. I'm so sorry last night I did not do a show, but uh, I've been running a very high fever, and I, I just am sick to my stomach and don't know. I just apparently caught some kind of stomach uh, bug of some sort. And anyway, I went to bed last night at 7 o'clock thinking maybe if I slept a couple hours, I could get up and do the show last night do the show last night but there was no way i slept till eight o'clock this morning i just never got up i just can't i've been sleeping all morning but anyway brock's done the research for the brock for the program and i've also spoke to agent rc and uh we've got to we've got some stories we got to get to so if you guys excuse me for this today's broadcast is in good faith this work contains fair use of copyrighted non-copyrighted images from the public domain and the web for the non-commercial, non-profit, educational purposes only. This broadcast is free of charge. We're reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're taking the current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. Heidi told me, she said, you know, you could be just, you're still, still tired. You haven't fully recovered from the long uh, trip and all the work we did in Israel. And then I came home and went straight in and, preached the uh teaching revelation for sunday school in knox uh and then preaching on sunday mornings as well and i just kept on rolling okay guys we had television shows yesterday as well noblegoldinvestment.com uh noblegoldinvestment.com now you may not know much about holland but it is one of the world's greatest trading nations and has been involved in uh commerce for hundreds of years the Dutch National Bank holds over $20 billion worth of gold it, it, that's in its vaults, which are scattered around the world for safety. It has recently been buying more gold. And on its website, it says that gold always retains its value, crisis or no crisis. They're expecting trouble, big financial trouble, and you should be too. Will your personal IRA accounts still hold their values in a financial meltdown? If you don't know the answer to this, you don't have ownership and control of your own retirement savings. So many people got their financial hands burned in the last big downturn. And if you expect to stay safe, you have to look to yourself and not put all your hopes in Washington and the Fed. How? Find out how you can secure your IRA or your 401k. Get a tax break. Take back control by calling Noble Gold Investment today. Pick up the phone. Call them right now. 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. Or hit the link below to get and learn about a gold video series. Call 877-646-5347. Get a hold of Colin Plume or one of his associates and ask to speak and talk about it today. Tell him Paul Begley sent you. All right? All right. Um, guys, there's been some earthquakes that have hit this morning. I think it's pretty significant. And um, the, both of them were 6.3 earthquakes. They hit in mexico okay one was a 6.3 that hit in mexico and one was a 6.3 that hit in russia and um the now the russia one was very deep it was over 400 kilometers deep all right and um it um, did not create a tsunami in any way Sorry about that. It didn't create a tsunami 
but it um, it did rock, uh, really rock the place. They really felt it there. And then, but then a six point three had had hit Mexico. Now the one that hit Mexico was powerful and very shallow, only eleven point one kilometers deep. It sent a shock wave all the way up the coast of Mexico all along the west coast of the United States, along the coast of California, Oregon, and Washington, all the way to Vancouver Island. Now, when it got to Vancouver Island, Canada, it made waves. Literally, the ground rumbled in waves from an earthquake in southern Mexico. This is extraordinary. And it's got people very, very concerned because they just didn't expect this to happen. But a major, two major earthquakes, 6.3 earthquake hits northwest of over Novosky, Russia. Uh, and according to the U.S. Geological Survey, and then a 6.3 hits Mexico that has caused these shock waves to just flow all the way up the coast to uh, Vancouver Island. Okay. And so these are very powerful, very, very powerful earthquakes. And we're going to keep an eye on what's going on because, you know, if you look at Dutch Sense has been reporting. And, you know, also, and I, I'm not going to show you this because I did a video on it already, but it has a bowl effect. In other words, it was kind of like they were, they were like from one coast to the other. I mean, we're talking from southern Mexico to Russia. It was like, it was like this bowl effect shaking the entire ring of fire you can expect more earthquakes to potentially happen uh in the ring of fire from this okay so let's keep an eye on it but the big news today is the attack in the holy land um i want to say god bless all of you that are joining us right now seriously uh 23 people are dead they're all believed to be iranians as israel went in and uh, about uh, five hours ago, Israel went in and hit 20 Iranian targets uh, that were all in Syria. Major, major attack by Israel, wiping out 20 Iranian uh, targets that are in Syria, not far from Damascus. They hit some Damascus targets a couple nights ago. Now they took out 20 more locations in Syria. 23 Iranians are dead, according to Defense Minister Naftali Bennett, who just took over as the defense minister while I was in, was in, was in Israel. Uh, look, he said, here's what he said. Defense Minister Naftali Bennett said to Iran, you are no longer immune. Wherever you stretch your tentacles, we will back them off. And so this war with Iran is going on. It's keeping them out of Israel. Uh, and Iran keeps up about how they're going to retaliate, but they never retaliate. Israel warned Iran from carrying out further attacks against the Jewish state of, after Israeli Air Force fighter jets carried out a wave of retaliatory airstrikes against dozens of military targets belonging to the Iranian Quds Force. Um which is the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Quds Force and the Syrian army on Tuesday night in Syria. Now, Israeli Defense Minister Naftali Bennett said following the strikes that the rules that changed, anyone who shoots at the state of Israel during the day will not sleep at night. Like last week, now this week, our message to Iran's leaders is very simple. You're no longer immune. Wherever you stretch your tentacles, we will back them off. Uh, the IDF will continue to protect the Israeli citizens. Now, um, we told you that this happened. And again, when you think about when I was in Israel, you think about the, the, the dream, the prophecy dream of Rhonda Epstein and the prophecy dream of Marty Breeden, both uh, in in uh, Rhonda's case, the dream came one year before I went to Israel. And it said, when Paul Begley goes to Israel, it will begin. 
and that dream has come to pass. What began, she didn't know. But then three days before the attack on Israel, Marty Breeden had a dream in which he saw rockets being fired into Israel, multiple rockets, many exploding, some near Tel Aviv, some even toward Jerusalem. These attacks definitely have been happening, and they're continuing to happen. And Israel, and also Israel has taken it to another level by, um, you know, going after these guys aggressively, taking out the Islamic um, jihad leader, killing him and his wife, killing another major Islamic jihad commander in Gaza, uh, wiping out, uh, taking out now several locations of Iranian, Iranian outpost in Syria. Uh, the fact that Netanyahu chose a new defense minister. I mean, here you can see it. And I don't think this thing is near over. Now, the news, your mainstream, lamestream media is completely ignoring what's going on in the Middle East with the impeachment fiasco that's going on in the swamp right now, which is absolutely a joke. But while they're wall to wall uh, impeachment, Israel, the Holy Land, is on the brink of a Middle East war. I'm telling you, we're on the brink of a Middle East war, and nobody wants to talk about it. Now, I'll just give you another update. I need to slip in my mind right now, but uh, I'll, I'll think of it in a second. But, oh, by the way, there still isn't a government in Israel. So, uh, again, Bibi, King Bibi, continues to be the prime minister. And now Naftali Bennett is his defense minister. And there still is no government formed. And today is the last day uh, that Bennett, I mean, that um, Benny Gantz has got to form a government. If he doesn't form one, then it goes back to the president, Rivlin Rivlin, of which he either has to give Netanyahu another chance, or maybe he just says, you know what? We're calling a new election. It's going to be in April, which means Netanyahu will remain in power as we move forward. And it's a very vulnerable situation. So you'll have Netanyahu twisting in the wind without a government, for a whole year, which now that makes me wonder about these prophecies that I got when I interviewed these rabbis while in Israel. Two different rabbis told me of the prophecies that were a hundred, were a little bit more than, um, well, some of the prophecies were over 150 years old about Planet X arriving at the time of the Messiah in which our response would be the return of the Messiah. And I said that to him. I said, it's, it's your, you guys are saying that as planet X arrives and the signs in the heavens and the wars, you're saying the Messiah will come. We're saying the exact same thing, but we're saying the Messiah returns, Jesus Christ. He said, I know exactly, yes, that's exactly right. Both of us are saying this, it's a conversion. And so what we're saying here is there's no doubt about this. We have a situation developing now that the prophecy is the Bible. But there's another prophecy that's from about 58 years ago from one of the uh, rabbis, one of the seers or prophets, who said that when the government fails twice, that soon the Messiah will come. Well, if they don't form a government again, this will be failing twice. So that doesn't mean the, the, the Jesus Christ comes back in the next five minutes, but it certainly means that we're in the end times if this prophecy is correct. Well, if I look at the Bible, I just look at, and I don't go by those prophecies, but I'll go by the, the scripture. And the scriptures definitely tell us that the signs of his coming are near, even at the door. So we're going to keep a close eye on this, okay? Um. Because it's we're living in the last days. I want to say God bless all of you. Hang on one second here. Rock, I look pretty bad, I think. Uh, oh man, 
and Wrigley lived in that white house Down the street where I grew up Mama used to send me over with things We struck a friendship up I spent a lot of long summers Out on his old porch swing Says he was in the war and in the Navy Lost his wife, lost his baby Broke down and asked him one time How'd you keep from going crazy? He said, I'll see my wife and son in just a little while I asked him what he meant He looked at me and he smiled, said I raised my hands I bow my head I'm finding more and more truth in the words written in red They tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see Oh, I believe Years later I was off to college Talking to my mom on the phone one night Getting all caught up on all the gossip The ins and outs of small town life She said, oh by the way son Old man Wrigley died Later on that night I laid there thinking back Thought about a couple long lost summers I didn't know whether to cry or laugh If there was ever anybody who deserved a ticket To the other side It would be that sweet old man Who looked me in the eyes Said I raised my hands I bow my head More and more true In the words written in red They tell me that there's more to life Than just what I can see I can't quote the book The chapter or the verse But you can't tell me It all ends in a slow ride in a hearse you know I'm more and more convinced The longer that I live Yes, it can't be No, it can't be No, it can't be All there is I raise my hands I bow my head I'm finding more and more truth The words written in red They tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see. Oh, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe. I believe. Guys, we're back. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm in the sick bed with running a fever and uh, stomach flu this morning. But I did want to touch on three or four of these key, key stories. Again, 23 Iranian soldiers have been killed 
Israel has done an airstrike and hit 20 different Iranian targets in Syria. Defense Minister Naftali Bennett uh, said to Iran, you are no longer immune. Wherever you stretch your ten tentacles, we will hack them off. Um, he went on to say, Israel warned Iran from carrying out further attacks against the Jewish state of Israel after the Israeli Air Force fighter jet carried out a wave of retaliatory airstrikes against dozens of military targets belonging to the Iranian Quds Force and the Syrian army on Tuesday night in Syria. Israeli Defense Minister Naftali Bennett said following the strikes that he, the rules have changed. Anyone who shoots at the state of Israel during the day will not sleep at night. Like last week and now this week, our message to Iran's leaders is simple. You are no longer immune. Wherever you stretch your tentacles, we will hack them off. The uh, is, Israeli Defense Force will continue to protect the Israeli citizens. And so the bombing still going on. Matter of fact, more on this. Uh, Iranian octopus sits in Tehran, but continues to attempt to surround Israel with proxy groups like Hezbollah in Lebanon, Iranian militants in Syria, Islamic Jihad, to some even, even Hamas in Gaza. We have not yet threatened the head of the octopus, Tehran, but it is possible to start approaching the head of the Iranian octopus. In other words, we're willing, or he's threatening now, Naftali Bennett, the new defense minister of Israel, he's telling Iran, if you don't watch it, we're going to attack the head of the octopus. In other words, we're going to attack you in Tehran, Iran. Now, the Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson, Brigadier General Hidiai Zieberman, told reporters, and you're looking right there, that's, that is uh, Kwasam Soleimani, I think, or it might be, is that Soleimani or is that Salami? Um, there's two of them, I don't know which. Anyway, the target struck in Damascus, west of Damascus, in Syrian Golan Heights overnight, belonging both to the regime of Bashar al-Assad and Quds forces of Iran, and they carried out within minutes, they were all located within 80 kilometers of Israel's borders. So see, these, these 20 Iranian targets were all within 80 kilometers or within 50 miles of Israel the border of Israel. You just can't let them, can't let them get this close. While the launchers, which fired the rockets on Tuesday morning, were not struck, some 20 other targets struck included advanced air defense systems that are not the Russian-made S-300 missile defense batteries, but surface-to-air missiles, reconnaissance sites, warehouses, national defense buildings, at the Damascus International Airport, which houses the Quads Force Air Headquarters and other military positions. And according to the British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, 23 people were killed. Uh, they say 16 of them were Iranians and the other seven were Syrians, but another report says all 23 were Iranians, so there's a little bit of confliction there. Certainly, uh, it's uh, getting very intense there. Now, we have another story. Footage um, shows that Russians have taken over northern Syria's air base that was once the home to the American troops. Moscow's Russia have landed helicopters and troops at a sprawling air base in northern Syria that was vacated by the United States forces. The Russian Defense Ministry said, uh, as Russian troops entered the compound, Zavada air footage of U.S. equipment such as medical supplies to treat sunburns 
had been left behind, as well as a gym and some sleeping facilities. Armed Russian military police were shown flying into the Syrian air base. So the Russians have decided to take over an abandoned air base that we left there. Uh, we didn't leave much. Sunburn uh, and maybe the sleeping quarters there. The facility uh, will be used as a this to distribute humanitarian aid. Brock's going to show you right where this air base was in Syria as he zooms in on Google Maps here. And uh, right in northern Syria, he's going to take you right to the location. You can see this air base was set in just outside of that city right there. And the Russians have decided to take it over, flying in and just going to use it which Russia says they're going to use it for humanitarian and local residents. And military air dome is now controlled by Syrian government forces, which are allies, of course, to Moscow. Now, uh, so the Russians have flown in. They're taking over. You see in footage of the Russians getting off the helicopters there. Turkey is part of a deal struck between Russia's President Vladimir Putin and Turkish counterparts to Erdogan. That's quote, we entered the base, we took the inner and external perimeter uh, uh, per, uh, pre under control, said the senior Russian military police inspector. Now sappers are looking and going through every building to make sure there aren't some kind of explosive substance left behind or some kind of surprise left for us. But uh, obviously the Americans did not booby trap it. They would be afraid it's civilians or, you know, people would just go in there and, and why, why booby trap it for no reason. But the Russians are inspecting it. So you got that going on. And don't forget the swamp is still in the, uh, in the mood of impeachment. Um, speaking of being in a sick bed, I might be better off in the sick bed here at home um drinking water than being in a sick bed in goshen indiana and i'm gonna tell you why in just a second oh i just feel horrible praise god my stripes were healed amen close to 1200 patients at goshen hospital may have been exposed to an infectious diseases goshen indiana close to 1200 patients at a goshen hospital in goshen indiana may have been exposed to infectious diseases according to health officials they say the patients who underwent surgeries between april the 1st and september the 30th of this year could be infected due to sterilization issues. One of the hospital's surgical instrument sterilization technicians failed to complete a necessary step, meaning patients could have been exposed to hepatitis C or to hepatitis B or to HIV virus. A letter has been sent to all the patients who have had surgery there since April the 1st. So let's zoom into Indiana and uh, let's make our way to Goshen, Indiana, up in northern Indiana, and all the way to this hospital in Goshen, Indiana, where this has taken place. While we apologize for the worry and inconvenience of this situation, it may cause our patients safety uh, and well-being has, has always been our utmost priority, they said. And Randall Christopher, we're just going right Okay, That's somebody's house. And Brock's taking us right down the street here to the hospital. What? Um, we want to assure our patients that we will assist in every way possible for those patients receiving a letter to be tested. Now, the Goshen Health recently beca uh, became aware of the situation that may have impacted surgical patients in Goshen, Indiana, 
at the Goshen Hospital from April 1st through September 30th. During this time, one step in the multi-step cleaning process was not completed. What they, what did they do? You're supposed to put these uh, surgical instruments in these high-powered sterilization washers. There's several steps you go through. I mean, are they just cleaning them off with some kind of, you know, wipes or something? You know, I mean, are, are they just using, you know, what are they doing up there? During this time, okay, they didn't follow one of the steps. The surgical instruments in question were still treated with other used chemical disinfections and machine sterilization process, which include a wide margin of safety. However, we're not able to determine if such instruments were completely sterile. This action has the potential of exposing a limited number of patients with hepatitis C, hepatitis B, or HIV, even though we believe the risk to be extremely low. Out of the abundance of caution, we're offering patients free testing for these viruses. The testing is a blood drawn, will be offered at a convenient location to the patients at no cost. The call center has been established Patients involved have been notified. Upon learning of this issue, Goshen Health immediately corrected the situation. As with any patient safety concern, they've rigorously investigated the... Uh, what's going on up there? Guys, how in the world can this go on? How can you do it wrong for six months? How in the world? Who's the supervisor? Who is the supervisor? <laughs> <coughs> you, you gotta be kidding me can I have a cup of coffee I can't deal with it okay I just can't deal with it I just can't deal with it just... let me give you some good news okay how about some good news guys oh, did you guys see what's going on at the swamp ambassador Sondland is testifying it kind of looks like he's throwing this all on uh rudolph giuliani somehow but i'm not sure how that's working out southern indiana southern indiana there was a horrible fire a home has been completely destroyed but a carving of wood made of jesus has survived now there's the carving it's made of wood of jesus christ there was eight pictures that were on the wall around this carving all of the pictures family photos and those kind of things were all consumed and burned up in the fire except the wood carving of jesus was not touched the, the people in the family had to jump out of a window to get out to save their lives this happened on sunday afternoon on east county road 300 south in paloli indiana down in southern indiana the families got out alive you can see the house is completely destroyed completely charred burnt and destroyed everything in the house was destroyed nothing survived except the wooden carving of Jesus Christ. It was not touched. Once again, God showing, I mean, how many times have we heard the stories like this? How many times have we seen these miracles? And you know, the Bible, I, I was telling people that this would be the year where there would be unmistakable miracles. How many houses have burnt down where the, the Bible was only thing left or you know a, a, you know even in la marzulli do you know that when la marzulli's house burnt down and destroyed everything he had his studio all of his library all of his books everything he owned the only thing that survived was a a little plaque that was sitting in the outside on the corner of the house that said faith hope and charity that little plaque did not get touched from the burning inferno 
that burnt everything around him, the woods, the everything, his house, everything to the ground. This little plaque that was setting right up against the corner of the house, even the corner of the house burned down. But the little plaque was setting there, stuck in the ground, little plaque that said, faith, hope, and charity. I mean, this goes on all the time. These are the signs that we're in the last days. These are the signs we're living in the last days. So there's the plaque surviving and and uh you know i don't know what what can you say it just we're constantly witnessing the powerful you know, the bible says heaven and earth shall pass away but my words abideth forever and so there's no stopping the power of jesus christ there's no stopping it we've made it we've we're going to make it and let me just encourage all my brothers and sisters and i see there's a pretty good large crowd over here on our backup channel today and i am so apologetic that i you know that i'm not in the studio getting everything up to speed brock what's this snow you're showing me am i oh you're right there was an in india thank you brock in india there was an avalanche that came roaring down the mountains killing six soldiers of india there was a horrible avalanche six indian soldiers have died and uh it's there's it's a very horrible situation there you can see the indian soldiers are out there in the army and they're all out looking for their comrades that were just destroyed and wiped out from an avalanche horrible story uh where our prayers go out to all the people there because it's just really really bad Guys, I tell you what, I'm just, I'm burning up with a fever. I, I can't, I just can't really hold my head up. I'm going to have to call it a day or, or this show. I will, uh, I will come back tonight. Let's hope I can break the fever and feel better. And I will see you guys tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. Okay. 10 p.m. Eastern. Now, I'm supposed to do an interview at 4.30, so I'm going to have to somehow get myself together. But uh, God bless all of you. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your prayers. Brock Begley produced this program and was able to patch me in from the sick bed here in West Lafayette, Indiana. But it's been a good program, and I just want to say to anybody out there who's not saved, give your life to Jesus Christ, okay? Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait. Can I just pray the prayer of salvation with you right now? I'm just going to pray it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. And there may be someone that wants to type in the chat room, I want to be saved. I'm going to pray the prayer. And you can give your life to Jesus Christ. We're in the end times. You can see what's going on. The wars the, the the rumors of wars brock i tell you what if you're listening play the song jerusalem's cry let's give people a chance to type i want to be saved and then i will pray that prayer with them type i want to be saved folks i want to be saved <laughs>
of God in the Bible says we're living in the end times. Soon we'll see His wrath come down and the Lord descending from the sky. When you hear the trumpet sound, God has answered Jerusalem's cry. God has answered Jerusalem's cry. Soon the dead in Christ shall rise and join Him in the sky. Even unbelievers will see God has answered Jerusalem's cry. God has answered Jerusalem's cry. We got two people that want to be saved. SK wants to be saved. And so does Jessica A. And praise God for both of you for giving your life to Jesus Christ. And the others that are watching this on the archives on different networks, God bless you. So SK wants to be saved and Jessica A. wants to be saved. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm calling on the name of Jesus Christ to come into my life, to come into my soul, to come into my spirit, to set me free. I'm, I'm sorry, Lord, and, and, and I want to make things right. I want to truly change, break the chains of sin off my soul. Set me free by your grace and your mercy and your love. Comfort my heart, Lord, and help me go on from this day forward serving you. I'm thankful for your mercy. I'm thankful for your loving kindness and mercy and grace toward me. And so right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. I am healed, I'm delivered, and I've been set free. I've been set free in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God heal the sick out there wherever you are. God bless all of you. And I'm going to let you guys go. You can always send an email to MsZD01 at Hotmail.com. If you need a Bible or a prayer cloth, a blanket or a chemo cap, or that little book, God Loves You, just... Uh, Use that email address, MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. I'm going to let you guys go. I, I can't. I'm done, okay? And I'll be back at 4.30 with an interview if I can. And then I will be back at 10 o'clock tonight with Primetime Live. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books. Uh, CDs and everything else we have and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you in Jesus name. I'm so thankful to have this opportunity folks to tell you about a brand new music CD called The Journey. 
Every song has been absolutely godly inspired to touch the heart and soul of every person. Go to my website at publiclyprophecy.com. Get it now because these songs will inspire you in your walk of life. The journey, we're all on it. And this music CD will literally change your soul. Secrets of the Sacred Incense, an unbelievable, extraordinary journey to find the apothecary, the mystical caves in the Holy Land where the sacred incense of the first temple were discovered. Come with me on a journey that will literally enlighten you to the truth of the last days, the biblical ramifications of the third temple, all in this powerful DVD. Get a copy of it now at my website. A powerful two-part DVD on Isaiah's apocalypse. It's an in-depth study into the prophetic words of Isaiah as he began to unravel the last days just before the coming of Jesus Christ. It's earth shattering. The heavens will be shaking. The earth is certainly quaking, but the prophetic message is so on track that soon many will realize we're in the end times. Get it now. The zombie awakened. Even Jesus Christ realized there would be a resurrection of the saints, but what about the resurrection of the damned? Hollywood has done a lot of damage deceiving the world, but according to the Bible, from Daniel's prophecies to Jesus Christ, there will be a resurrection of the damned. The zombie awakening. Get this DVD series today. A brand new DVD, Blood Moons and Prophetic Signs. We're taking a very close look at the historical, biblical, and prophetic signs in the Bible. From the solar eclipses, to the blood moons, to the midnight hour of these the last days. What does the heavens mean by shaking, the earthquakes, and other events going on? Get this DVD. Get it now at my website. Released from Cincinnati, a four-part DVD set on the end times. Planet X, Nibiru, the seas rising, the pole shift, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, Stephen Bendenoon, and myself, bringing forth dynamic information relevant to the last day. You can get this four-part DVD set at my website or individually at my Patreon channel. The heavens are shaking. This is a must-see. Get it now. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you.